So now I think it's important to look at the quotient rule in calculus. So let's look at that. The quotient rule is when you have, so just like before, when you have one function of x, and this time we're going to divide it by, so divided by another function of x. Whoops, can't seem to spell. There we go. I keep moving this by accident, sorry. There we go. So I'm by another function of x. And like the product rule, we have a rule for this. So if we have something that goes y equals this time u over v. So if we have some function of x divided by some function of x, then we have an equation for the derivative. In other words, for the slope of the tangent at any point. And it goes like this. So it goes v du dx minus u dv dx. All that is divided by v squared. So that is the notation that we should be using. Although if we want to be a little bit sloppy, we can, I think, get away with it and say, well, if we only have single variable stuff, then we can say this is the same thing as v times, well, du dx, that's just u primed. So v u primed minus u times v primed. So u v primed, all that over v squared. And I think the biggest mistake that students make is they forget to divide by the v squared. It's like you're so used to doing product rule. I mean, this is sort of like product rule, except you'd have a adding here. So it works and looks a little bit like the product rule, but it's important to take your time with this one here because it's not the same. It is different. So if we do this here, this is the quotient rule. So again, we can use the same things we did for product rule, but this time for quotient rule. So let's take a look at an example. So we've got here, 2x plus 4 over x minus 1. That's our original function, and we want the derivative. So if we want that, then maybe it helps to write it out again. So the derivative then will be, it'll be v u primed minus u v primed over v squared. And I should probably make this top part that should be u, and this right here should be v, right? Because it's u over v. So that's what it should look like at least. Well, if I want to use this form, then I, I should definitely make it like this. Well, now it's just a matter of, again, taking your shopping list, so to speak, and going shopping. I need a u, I need a v, I need a u primed, and I need a v primed in order to deal with this. So u is just 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4 v is just x minus 1. And the derivative of 2x plus 4, again, this is like a little stealth 1 here. The 1 comes in front and makes it 2. That multiplies times an x to the power of, well, 1 minus 1 is just 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so it's just this. And the derivative of a constant goes poof, disappears. So it's just this. In the same way, this becomes just 1 here because there was a power of 1 in front. 1 times 1 gives you just 1. And this one right here goes poof, disappears. Well, that means I'm ready to write out my derivative then. My derivative is going to be v times u primed. In this case, this times this. So 2 times x minus 1. That's v u primed. Minus u v primed. So I need this times 1. Well, anything times 1 is boring, so I'm just going to write it like this. Let's say 2x plus 4. The biggest mistake students can make, actually, I want to show you it. I want to do the mistake that most students would actually make. Most students, at least if they're going to make a mistake here, they'd say this, minus 2x, and then they'd say plus 4. And the thing is they forget that you're supposed to do minus the entire 2x plus 4. If you just did it like this, this implies it's minus 2x, and then you have to add 4 to it. But it turns out you should be really, really careful because this is wrong. You should actually say this. Put this in a bracket because it should be minus 2x minus 4. That's the important thing there i got to divide all this by v squared, so x minus 1, all that squared. Well, there we go. I seem to be done, but maybe I can simplify a little bit. I'm going to multiply this out. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. Then I have minus 2x, and I have a minus 4. 
all that's over x minus 1 squared. You might think, hey, I should expand this bottom part. But I've got a hint for you, or at least a suggestion. Whenever you have the bottom that's already factored, in other words, like squared or cubed or something like that, leave it. Because what you're hoping for is that the top stuff, let's say the top stuff ended up giving you an x minus 1. Well, then you could have one of the x minus 1s divide out you know, one of these, so you could get rid of some of these powers. That's what I'm often hoping for, at least, because it makes things look a little bit tidier. Now, in this case, it's not going to happen, but let's take a look here. We've got 2x minus 2 minus 2x minus 4. I'm going to combine like terms, so I've got this 2x right here is going to cancel out that negative 2x because positive 2x minus 2x, those, those disappear. I have minus 2 minus 4. So that means then finally my answer is going to be y prime, but it's going to be just negative 6 over x minus 1 squared. So again, this will tell me my derivative or my slope of my tangent line of this graph at any point. So that's how we can deal with the quotient rule. We can deal with more complicated things uh, later on, but uh, I think it's important just to get an idea of the mechanics behind it, which we've just done.